everyone. We're going to be taking a look at something quite amazing, in my opinion at least. So what we're going to be looking at is a Nintendo 64 emulator called Korn. For a little bit of a history lesson, uh, this was at a time when Nintendo 64 emulation was going from Project Unreality, which was, I think, the very first Nintendo 64 emulator, and it could only run a few homebrew applications, but it was still, you know, pretty amazing at the time. It proved that, you know, hey, you can emulate the Nintendo 64 on the current hardware that was available at the time. I think it was uh, 1998 around there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. After that, though, in uh, 1999, we had Ultra HLE. It actually ran games pretty well, given you had, you know, good hardware for the time. Corn came out in 2000, I believe, and the latest version was made in 2001. The creator of Corn, uh, Contra SF, unfortunately dropped off of the face of the earth, seemingly, because of the fact that uh, this latest version, 0.3, was actually leaked. It wasn't meant to be released yet. I pulled up some forum threads in chronological order to a point. People, you know, asking, wondering what happened to Contra SF. You can see this is from 2002. People were wondering where this went. And somebody from 2005, unfortunately, didn't even get an answer. Uh, he was wondering if anybody had contact to Contra SF. Apparently his emails or his email is dead. Uh, this is 2006. Contra SF, he's gone. It's unfortunate. Contra SF, if you're out there, before I get into your emulator, you know, I personally hope you're doing really cool endeavors of your own, whether it be a job or, you know, still doing emulators under a, you know, kind of covert underground alias or something like that. We need you back. Well, we don't need you back, but it would be nice to at least know that you're out there. Nobody deserves to have their stuff leaked without their you know, consent. So let's actually get into the emulator now. Um, I've heard that this is a, a static recompiler, which means it recompiles the whole game binary to run natively on your machine. Similar approach to the early version of CXBX, which was an Xbox emulator, original Xbox. The original goal of CXBX was to basically convert the Xbox executable to a native Windows executable. As for corn, let's get into the settings. So for graphics, uh, these are the default settings. Although I have tried different settings that work a lot better. These are the default settings. So low, lowest resolution. None of these checked. Audio is disabled by default, which was interesting. Um, controller, I've actually changed from the default because I didn't like the control scheme it had on by default. So I've kind of used this weird one because I couldn't get my controller working. But, you know, that's fine. Uh, option ooh, about to my parents and wife. A lot of special thanks. And everyone I forgot to mention. This guy seems like a guy who really cares about his craft and the people around him. God, I hope you're still out there. Uh, but yeah, for options, uh, you can use startup ROM folder. You can use the last folder visited in the previous run, which is, you know, pretty good. Or you can use a default ROM folder. And then you can use Corn L or Corn H. I think these are different variants of Corn that work on different processors. Corn L is for, I think... Somewhat older, you know, lower-end processors. Corn H is for what was considered pretty high-end at the time. I'm just going off of what the what the README says. I don't think my processor is any of these. I have an Intel Core i7. I th I think I don't think this matters, but I'm going to use Corn H because it seems like seems like something for the big boys. And I uh, I consider myself a very large man, so you know, big boy. Uh, we're going to use the default settings for graphics and audio just to show you what I had to face when I was trying to first start this emulator. Alright, let's run. So you can notice an immediate problem. The game runs way too fast. Now normally I would have used something like DxTory to cap the frame rate to 60 FPS. I believe there's a lot of other programs you can use, but the thing that I found interesting about this was... Let me close it out. Oh, another cool thing is you can run as many of these as you want. It's kind of funny. I can have three instances of super fast Mario 64 if I want. Um, for graphics, I'm going to turn the resolution up. This won't really change anything with the speed. I mean, it might, but, you know, it'll still run super fast because there's no cap. I don't have a voodoo card, so I'm obviously not going to use that. I'm going to use high-end video card just in case. So let's run it now. Okay. Higher resolution. It's not as fast, but it's still way faster than it should be. Here's the real kicker. In audio... You enable, you notice, 
when you run it with audio. It's me, Mario! It's capped to the proper frame rate. Hello! Actually, turn this down. The pitch is kind of wonky, but I mean, you know, early emulator, it's fine. One thing I notice is there's no specular highlights like there is on the actual Nintendo 64 or other emulators like Project 64 and 1964. I mean, again, early emulator. You might wonder what's so amazing about this in particular. One thing that was really amazing and why it's a lot of people's favorite Nintendo 64 emulator, or was, is because this ran extremely fast on lower end hardware because of the methods it was using. Again, it was using static recompilation. Ultra HLE required kind of a rig at the time, from what I've heard. With this, you could run this on something that was considered, you know, kind of on the lower end of the spectrum back in the early 2000s. So with my terrible control scheme, I'm going to <coughs> create a new file. Let's see how it plays when we get into the game. This is my big problem with Mario 64, you can't skip this. It's, it feels like what you would expect of Project 64 nowadays. Pretty good. Uh, I feel like there's some quirks. I thought I saw Mario's shadow be a little pixelated. But maybe I'm wrong. <coughs> you can notice a little bit of visual glitching, like Mario's arm is was kind of screwing up with shading. But just, this was 2001. The best you could get was Ultra HLE. This, this just ran better. Let's just see how this stacks up. I find it really intriguing that the audio seems to be pitched up by, I don't know, I want to say half a note, like a, like a semitone or something. So this looks, you know, pretty good. For Mario 64, anyway. It's nowhere near what you could get with like so something like Project 64, but of, of course it's not. This is really tough to play with the current keyboard setup I have. Like, I don't like this. Let's get our first star. I want to do a cool jump. There we go. Yeah. Again, don't like playing this without a controller. This is going to be pretty painful, I already know. You also notice some transparency issues, but like... Oh, Jesus, throwing me. Oh. I'm not trying to scrutinize this emulator, uh, or criticize it, because, you know, what emulator wasn't buggy in the early stage of it? Like, like, Yuzu is still suffering. Ah, jeez. <coughs> Bruh. Okay, bro. Yeah. The first time I played this game, I actually thought you had to throw him off, and then he kept coming up, and I was like, wow, why isn't this working? So... That was a very pleasant experience. Even if I had to use keyboard, that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, just as fun as it's been every time I've played this. I used to have to play this on a keyboard when I didn't have a controller and I was like first introduced to 64 emulation. Anyway, as you can see, corn holds up very well with Mario 64. I would test other games, but I don't actually have any ROMs to actually, let me see. I want to try something that may not work. Mario Party and Zelda did not run, nor did Smash Brothers, so I'm trying Star Fox 64. I don't know why there's no audio. Uh, I have audio enabled. This is even buggier. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of problems with this one, but hey, it plays. This is amazing. I'll do my best. Andros won't have his way with me. Sorry, I have to fill in the I have to fill in the blanks. <laughs> Full disclosure, I have never actually played Star Fox. Well, I've played like very little of Star Fox 64. I haven't played enough to like be a fit because I'm a Star Fox fan. I've never played enough of Star Fox 64 to consider myself a true Star Fox fan, though. This and being able to tolerate uh, how low the frame rate was on the original Star Fox games is is how you become a true Star Fox fan. Speaking of which, I really want to play Starlink because it looks like a great game in its own right, but the fact that the Switch version has, uh, has Star Fox characters interwoven into the story is just... That's great. Wow. Oh, 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 dear. Oh, God. Dude, this is actually... Like, the reflections are there? That's really cool. It's not... I'll admit, it's not pretty. 
I don't I don't know why it's not rendering anything else. Uh, is it supposed to? I don't even know. Oh, 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 there's some stuff coming. <coughs> this is really cool either way. Like, the fact that it's running at all. Oh, dude. This looks really cool on the simulator, even if it's, like, buggy. This is awesome. I've played enough of Star Fox 64 to know what it's supposed to look like, and this isn't quite on par, but, oh, shit. Man. I think what's, the, the thing that really bugs me isn't the visuals, it's the lack of audio. But, like, dude, when it looks, if you were in, like, 2000, and it looks this good, plays this good, and you have, like, a crappy processor, and it's still playing really good, this is, like, this is it, Chief. This is, like, something else. Plus, like, I could play fucking Mario 64 on this really well with audio. So, like, you kind of, for, like, somebody who didn't want to spend money on a Nintendo 64, or couldn't, this was a pretty good deal. <laughs> They're throwing bars and shit at me. <coughs> ah, jeez. I'm not very good at this game. But then again, I'm not using a controller. Man, I'm still I'm still stoked by how well the reflections work. That that's impressive for the Nintendo 64. Considering this is in an emulator that's like early as hell, that's like that's something else. I should try out Ultra HLE just to see what it's like. I don't I don't know how well that'll run, but you know, it might perform better than this because I don't because I have like a really good rig as opposed to a crappy rig that you would usually run this emulator on. I think Ocarina of Time might work. I didn't get Majora's Mask to run, but uh, I would try Ocarina of Time if I had it. This was not listed as supported, so the fact that this can run is interesting. So I think we've had our fill of uh, corn, which, you know, is great. Also, I really need to play Eggman Hates Furries. Back in the day, if you're looking for just really good performance, you know, this is the way to go. Again, Contra SF, if you're out there, we appreciate you and your work and your parents and wife and everybody here.